Hey guys, the objective of this video is to assume mentions and we're going to be checking it using clause 8.5.4 to see that it satisfies the deflection limits and we're designing our beam for grid line 1. So just to start off, here's our problem again. Now we're looking along grid line 1. So if we were to take a cut through this, like a, a cross section, so this is in plan. If we were to take a section through grid line 1 along that grid line, we would have a diagram that looks something like this. So we have an L-shaped beam. So we're assuming a beam of 650 by, by 450. So we're assuming a beam dimensions of 650 by 450, okay? And we don't know just, just yet the um, effective width. We're gonna have to find that a bit later. So what we have to do first of all is ensure that this assumption of this beam is gonna satisfy the deflection limits. Now, I'm just gonna give you a heads up. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a long process and might take us a couple of videos to complete this. So in an exam situation, I wouldn't really worry about doing this. Once again, this is just my word. Don't take it as 100% um, as truth. Um, it does take a while to do this. So I think in an exam situation when you're under pressure, there's a good chance you'd probably be, you'd be given the um, beam dimensions. That's a very good chance that would happen. But if you're not, I really wouldn't go and check all this. I would just assume something like this. This is a pretty standard case. Um, around these dimensions, just be sensible about it. But as I say, this type of thing takes a while just to check the um, check that the beam is adequate. So, from clause 8.5.4, we have this deemed to comply span to depth ratio for reinforced beams. So just like um, the slab design where we went and we had a clause similar to this, we had to check all these things and we came up with a slab depth. We now need to come up with a slab a uh, beam depth. So if I just zoom in, this is the formula we're going to be using and I've just rewritten it over here. So we just need to check this and we're assuming this beam dimensions to start. So the first thing we want to do, we can calculate the effective width. Now the effective width for an L section is given as the width of the web plus 0.1a and that's from section 8.8.2 so if I find that for you just quickly so section 8.8.2 we have the effective width of a